G'day mates and welcome to Surviving Mars. I really, really enjoy this game and it's a little bit of a shame that content-wise it's kind of getting overwhelmed uh, or sort of uh, overshadowed by uh, Waking the Tiger. This is City Skylines in space with a sort of RimWorld slash Sims focus on your colonists. It's really good fun. Although I suppose the the lack of uh, the one thing it lacks is road development, which is something I'll mention. I'm not a huge fan of, but uh, overall a really solid, very fun game. Brand new as well. It's not a DLC or anything. Now I'm actually streaming this uh, on Twitch in seven hours' time, so there'll be two episodes out today because man, I have more content than I have days right now. Um, so there'll be two episodes: one at release at one a.m. Oh, sorry, at uh, embargo drop at one a.m. One at 6 a.m. and then a stream at 8 a.m. That means the uh, stream will be Wednesday 8 a.m. AEDT for uh, for those of us in Australia. For those of you in San Francisco, that is 2 p.m. on the Tuesday, the day before. New York is 4 p.m. the day before, and London is 8 p.m. the day before. So that's all on Tuesday for the rest of the world, and it will be 8 a.m. Wednesday for uh, Australia and any of those in our time zone. So now we've got that over with. Let's play. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to run through the mechanics as a sort of look at the game, like I will be, I don't know, just sort of like diving into little bits and explaining how things work, uh, because my sort of like actual play challenge doing, uh, you know, naming Twitch chat after colonists will be done during the stream, uh, because I just don't have the time to, I don't have the time to wait for, like, release a video, wait, get everyone's names, and then put them all as colonists, we'll just, I'll try and, uh, run through and, and look to as many things and explain as many things as possible. Alright, so here is the first very fun part, is making your mission. Uh, you have a choice of who's your mission's sponsor is going to be. For example, International Mars Mission is very easy. Uh, you've got, you know, large rocket payload, lots of science, lots of funding, lots of applicants, lots of food, lots of, uh, your rockets make fuel automatically. Look, it's very, very easy. But then you can also play as the USA, who has additional funding. Uh, they have big rockets. Um, you can start as the Blue Sun Corporation. I kind of like the idea of playing a corporation. Corporations are really cool. So, uh, they can buy applicants with funding, so this, they actually change the way you play the game, which is what I really, really like about this. Beyond just running a different thing, you can actually change how you play. Um, you get bonus tech deep metal extraction, which is really, really good to start off with. That's amazing, even. We might go for them. Um, you can then go for China, who gets 10 additional colonists per rocket. That's who we're going to probably play on the stream, so we can name lots of people. Um, you've got, uh, India, who has building costs reduced, and they've got low-G engineering to start off with. Starting with the medium dome is super powerful. You've got Europe, who starts with five extra starting techs, gains funding every time a tech is researched, and gains double if it's a breakthrough tech. That's really good. That's a science playthrough. And they start with extra science. So actually, I might even play them so I can do some tech in, like, I can tech up pretty quick. Yeah, I think we might play Europe then. Um, space Y. <laughs> hey! Uh, 50% cheaper advanced resources. That basically means that buying resources from Earth is cheaper. Church of the New Ark is very hard. As you, oh, as you see, they obviously different difficulties. Um, Space Y is normal. Church of the New Ark is hard. All colonists are religious. Birth rate is doubled. But hydroponic farms don't work so good. Uh, Russia has rockets. Have extended travel time. So it takes a uh, lo longer for the rockets to get from Earth and Mars and back. Um, fueled extractors upgrade is cheap. Which, uh, sorry, is free rather. Which is uh, amazing. That means your extractors work a lot, lot better. Um, and then Paradox Interactive, which is my favorite one. But sadly, they're not really an interesting one to play. They're a very hard, uh, it's called Mission Sponsor, but they're not very interesting. See, uh, you discover more breakthrough anomalies, which, I mean, is kind of cool. That means you get more random techs. Uh, breakthroughs are techs that you can't get normally. Breakthroughs are very specific. Um... Basically, just like bonus text. I know one, for example, is Soylent Green. You get to turn your colonist's corpse into uh, into food, which is really good fun. That's the sort of game this is. Um, but yeah, it's it's a cool one. We might... I don't know. I think they're a little bit too... We'll go, we'll go with Europe. Uh, then you have a commander profile, which is... I really like this, so it gives you a little bonus. Uh, Inventor is a really strong one. Uh, oh yeah, different bonuses are 120. Uh, for example, uh, drone hubs no longer require power or maintenance. Gra uh, Drones are gradually optimized to work and construct faster until Sol 100. Really good. The Oligarch means f uh, fuel production goes up and you get Arcology. Not great. Um, these are all like different bonuses, right? Uh, water deposit revealed, consume less water, more more birth. Um, colonists recover more sanity. Nah, no. Funding gains are increased. Breakthrough techs are researched 30% faster. That's pretty good. 
Uh, the bonus deck is an amazing for them. I feel like I feel like astro uh, astro geologist. Although we're not playing Russia, are we? So, hmm. Rocket scientist is really good. Starts with the shuttle hub, which is a very powerful building. Sure, we'll do that. So we can start with the shuttle hub. All right, and we start with an extra rocket too. Then meanwhile, we get the colony's logo, which uh, there's a whole bunch of them. There's obviously don't panic bio robot, Brussels sprouts. Oh my god, paradox family values. Oh god, there's a bunch of very cool ones. I think yeah, we're gonna go for the serenity. Here we go. And then the mystery. Now, if you don't want any spoilers at all, look away now for the next 20 seconds. I'm going to, like, d minimize the video. I'm going to keep talking, and you can just come back when I say, we're all good. Uh, these are the mysteries. Something will happen during your game, and as you can see, uh, it's normally you're on random, and it's pretty good. Uh, it'll give you one that you haven't probably played yet. Uh, there's a variety of... Uh, they don't really, like, they don't reveal what happens, but you can get an idea of what sort of, you know, comes from them. They're all very different. They all uh, change your game. They're all an end game sort of challenge or something occurs. We're just going to go random. We'll see what we get. Um, all right, you can come back now. We're, we're past the part where you could read the names of the mysteries. It's sort of like, um, what would you call the game? Um, Betrayal on the House on the Hill, where each each uh, game ends with a random event, which I imagine they'll add more. And it's very, it's the one I played was very cool. It was challenging as hell. So here's where we get to choose our first, uh, what's it called? Uh, rocket. Uh, first, yeah, first payload to bring with us. Um, we can bring a drone hub, a moisture vapor, uh, vaporator, fuel refinery, all cool things. Uh, we're gonna need drones. Drones are how you build things. They're your little robots, and they're controlled by either rovers or drone hubs. We won't be starting with a transport. Actually, I might cut back on, like, the orbital probes. How much is a transport? 300 million, right. Hmm. Maybe, maybe we'll just have to bring it in the next one. Yeah. I guess we could just go for scanning instead. No, let, let's just, okay, let's just go with this. So we get to choose a landing spot. We're going to choose someone that's interesting. So you basically have the choice of, uh, it's sort of the threats and the metals. Yeah, sorry, and the resources you have to balance out. So we're going to go for, oh, this looks nice. Loads of water and concrete. But dust storms are pretty regular. Okay. Um, we could also look around here. There's like some pre uh, preset places. Oh, here's nice. Elysium Beta or Elysium Alpha. All right. Oh, okay. That's a lot better, actually. Uh, uh, Cinium. Let's go for uh, Elysium Beta. So the only real problem will be meteors. The rest will happen very, very occasionally. Sure. Let's uh, let's start. Obviously, you could you could choose a crazy location to go for a really hard challenge. Um, because surviving this game is actually pretty rough. You got to balance the resources. Mm, Welcome to Mars. Quickly is the best way to put it. Okay, so the brave pioneers. Everyone at mission control is impatient to see the ro rocket touching down and unloading its precious cargo. So what we're going to do is we're going to find an area. Oh, this looks pretty simple. Wait, did I play this area last time? I might have. I might have actually played this area already. Did I already? Did I choose the same area? Seriously? Okay, piss off. I'm trying to figure out. Maybe I did. Hang on, hang on. Let's use orbital probes here real quick. Oh my god, I might have. Yep, I've actually played this area before. Well, it's alright. I know what to do then. I um, can't believe I, changed, I chose the same site. I didn't even realize. So here we go. Anomalies. Right, we're going to land our first hub. Oh, there's underground rare materials all around here. These are pretty good. Uh, there's concrete here, concrete here, and metal here. This is a great place for our first dome. Uh, because you need humans to actually gather the rare metals and uh, and the metals. So what we're going to do is we're going to put down... Hang on. Um, oh God, okay, I'm, I'll be honest. I don't really like the tip system. I should uh, get rid of it somehow. What was the... Okay, R for rotate. We're going to put down our first rocket here. No, we're going to need concrete. So we'll actually... Our first rocket will go here instead. Okay, so here we go. We start with uh, a bunch of extra attacks. Basically one level and everything. We start with shuttle hubs as well, which is very strong. Um, we can't actually research anything yet because we've not touched down. Let's just turn on a uh, higher speed. Oh yeah, we need to scan some sectors. So there you go, this is how you discover new things. Come on. There we go. Alright, so this is our explorer. Normally you get three things. You get a rover and a... Uh, a rover is like a remote drone controller. See, this is a drone controller. And a transport is for moving goods. We'll get those as time goes on. Um, oh shit, no, we don't actually... Oh, so we start with these techs. Ah, I got it. Okay, right. Um, so let's no start research. with getting our research increased. Then we're going to 
next get um, water production increase, and then probably engineering. Yeah, sure. So the tech is... Um, I don't... Does it follow a path always? I'm not quite sure. I think it follows... I think these follow a path, but the breakthrough tech is random. Um, okay, so let's actually build our first building. So what we're going to want is a drone hub to... So, yeah, probably around... If we're having the dome here, we're going to want the drone hub here. Yeah, that could work. All right, cool. We'll pop that there. Drone hub there. Uh, and then we're going to want power for the drone hub since we're not playing the inventor. The inventor's really nice because all your drone hubs uh, don't need power. So we'll go something like this here. And then we'll rotate this. And we'll rotate this. Lovely. So we go, we go, we go three windmills. I'm going to go for two solar panels as well just to sort of uh, prepare us for the future. We'll run a power cable along it, straight to the drone hub. And we're also going to want a power accumulator, just in case. So we're going to build two of those like so. Now, what we'll have to start off with is our drones will run around and grab these metals that are scattered around the place. There's also polymers. Um, I can't actually see any right now, though. They'll be around here somewhere. But anyway, you can. Uh, there's some resources on the surface, and then the rest of it we have to either bring in by rocket or mine. So what we're going to have to do here, we're also going to have to set up our life support. So moisture evaporator uh, means that we need to... It basically produces water and it produces less if there are other nearby uh, evaporators. So we're just going to put it there where it should be fine. Run some pipes along. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll run some pipes to here. Analyzed. Milestone oh, achieved. here we go. Hang on. What, uh, what happened with the anomaly? There's more to the barren environs of the red planet than meets the eye. Yep, here we go. A veritable trick. Okay, so basically that was just a tech thing. And what it did was it revealed some technology. Um, so we've got oxygen production, uh, oxygen production can go up, or rocket cargo space is increased. So let's increase cargo space next, because we're about to bring in rockets. Uh, and then we'll increase those too. Beautiful. Alright, can we actually build a shuttle hub yet? Because that'd be hilarious to have super early on. A shuttle hub uh, is basically remote drones. They can uh, carry resources to places, and they can also move colonists around. So, a colonist can move from like dome to dome to dome, but if you've got like one dome here, and a dome down here, then you need your, like you need shuttles to move between them. All right, uh, let's put down that fuel refiner I was just looking at. Here we go. So this is how we're going to refuel our rocket to get off the planet. Cable fault reported. Ah, so cable faults and pipe faults will happen as your um, network gets bigger. And a way to avoid them is to have a smaller contained networks, which is actually pretty easy because you can just you know set up a turbine or two, or some solar panels and batteries to look after each person. Now we're going to set up some depots to pull in our resources. So we're going to put them. Um, uh, on this side, here we go. Some universal depots. And then we're going to set a concrete depot for all the concrete we're about to harvest. And then for the waste production, uh, sorry, waste rocks, they're going to go, ooh, oh, over here. Here we go. It's not an explored sector as of yet. But, oh, it's weird. It's blocking. All right, sure. That'll be fine. Oh, it's because, uh... oh, this is weird. There's dumping sites there, but they're not appearing. Oh, well. Oh, because the construction site's got to be cleared. Gotcha. All right. So, let's uh, actually get to work. Uh, we could start with a basic dome. Oh, we're actually going to need two domes. Oh. I mean, that's not terrible. Two domes is not a bad start. Um, so, we'll build one here. Actually, I mean, should we wait? We should probably wait for polymer production and such, because we don't have uh, any other way to build that stuff right now. We need a polymer, fa a polymer factory. And then, uh, currently, we can't actually build those on our own. We need to bring them from Earth until we can research them. Uh, let's get a moxie going on as well. So Moxies produce uh, oxygen. Oh, there we go. New anomaly. Hello, send a researcher to explore this. There we go. Off he rolls. Wait, how do we find an anomaly here? We didn't research this area. Cable fault reported. Right, that's weird. And there goes the next bloody cable fault. All right, I'm going to get to work on this little colony, and then I'll be back in a moment. One of my favorite things about this game is all the little animations and stuff you can see. So you can really get down low, and you can actually also like manually command pretty much everyone. Um, the colonists as well all have different traits and ideals. You know, this guy's repairing a thing. Look at him go. <laughs> the funniest thing is their recharging animation. I'll try and show it to you. Give me a second. Um, do we have that yet? Sector scanned. Here we go. Recharge station. Oh god, when this builds, it's gonna be great. So I've just called in another rocket. You you do it with this screen. You can call in passenger rockets. They were obviously not ready for passengers yet, or cargo rockets, and then you can call in bits and pieces. And uh, what it does Research is it brings a rocket complete. in. Oh. Anomaly analyzed. Hello, we just got a bunch of uh, that. Grants one time uh, when we're in funding. Yeah, we don't really need that just yet. That's all fine. 
let's bring the rover back. I'm also getting the other two uh, types of... Sorry, the explorer, rather. The other two types of uh, robots to come over. So, let's see. We can rename this robot to... Uh, Ready Explorer 1. Perfect. Um, and we'll go back... Oh, shit, we don't actually have that yet. Here we go. One thing I do wish... I wish you could scroll out a little bit further before the game did this. So you Because you can go up to this view where you're like, oh, looking around at your sectors, and you can go like, oh, let's go in here. But... It feels like almost a little bit too claustrophobic. Uh, so hopefully there'll be a little little expansion on that at some point. Here we go. We're, we're slowly refueling the rocket. Uh, what it means is this is generating fuel from water. Uh, we've also got this. It needs to be connected to oxygen consumer. All right, that's cool. Um, we've also got this, which is now producing oxygen. Research it's a moxie. Complete. Right? Uh, but what we're essentially doing is producing water with the vaporator, uh, turning that into fuel, putting that back into the rocket, and then we're going to fly the rocket back to Earth. All right, here we go. The rocket is now in orbit. So we're just going to bring it down right next to our old one. And uh, it's going to offload its cargo. I do love the little... You can actually scroll back up here. Wait for it. Hey, there it goes. I love the look of these things. They always remind me of uh, something I'll build in Kerbal. So here we go. We now have the rover, which is a remote way of controlling drones. Actually very powerful. You're building, like, uh, sort of off-colony stuff. So if you're like, oh, I want something. I want to mine something over here. You'll send the rover over to build it. Because obviously you need drones to maintain and do stuff. The transport's very fun. What it does is it, uh, you can use it to basically do a supply route, say, to move. Uh, if I have concrete. If I have this. Okay. Let's look over here. This concrete, right? If this was harvesting concrete, my, well, my drones can't carry it all the way over. So what I do is I set up a transport route where this rover moves between. However, what's really useful and what I didn't realize it could do at first is that early on, you can send it to gather from surface resources, right? Some deposits. So, it can run around and gather up metal from further away than your drones can reach. See? And now if I, uh, if I looked around, I'd probably find some polymers somewhere. I think I'm going this way because this is all cliffs, but if we go off rather... Oh! I think these drones are actually within range. Yeah, they're coming to steal it from him. Well, I went to the wrong one, but uh, there's some metals. There we go, that's out of range. Let's go uh, grab those metals. Anyway. So those are the uh, different types of drones. Uh, sorry, uh, rather RC. I guess I guess they are drones. It's weird because you call them like rovers, but then there's an explorer and there's a train. I guess they are, they're just drones, but there's also drones which are called drones. I'm not quite sure what to refer to the lot of them as. Robots. Perfect. They're all robots. Um, right. Let's put up a... Where are we? Not here. Ah, Sterling Generator. Yeah, the reason why it's going rather slow at the moment is the fact that most of my stuff is... Uh, what do you call it, is all out of power. So they're going to build this prefab uh, little sterling generator we got here. By the way, the, how close you can get is so good. Look at this. Look at this. Wait, hang on. Oh, but let's, uh, let's send... Here we go. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Here we go. Oh god, hang on. Yeah, there we go. I need to just angle it a little bit. If you get too low, it freaks out. But here we go. I want to send... Yeah, oh my god, look at it. Look at it. Uh, give, me, give me a drone. Yeah, you. Come, come here and recharge. Watch how they recharge their batteries. <laughs> they just grab a fucking thing and get electrocuted. It's so good. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, man. Also really fun is you can change the radio station in this game. Whoa. Whoa. I'm accidentally clicking off my screen right now. There we go. Ignore that. What you can do is you can go Surviving Mars, or you can go, like, Red Frontier. <laughs> the Free Earth Channel. Ooh. The official Mars channel? This ain't bad. Let's start with the free Earth. I like what was here and there. Alright. Oh, God, yes. See, this is such a relaxing game. I love it so much. Alright. So, here we go. Our uh, solar panels are working. Our power accumulators are now working. We've got power working all throughout here. We need to put down the polymer factory we just ordered. So... Here's what we're going to do. Too far from drones? What? Oh, from domes. Oh, right. Sorry. The polymer factory needs humans to work it, so we can't actually get polymers just yet. I always, I always forget. For advanced resources, you actually need humans working in the dome. So, let's start building our domes and planning for bringing the first humans here. Two metal extractors there. That's fine. Actually, we'll just put it here so we get rid of this big, ugly rock, right? So, two metal extractors there, and then we put a polymer factory here. Right. Sector scanned. And then, oh look, that uh, that sector has polymers in it. I could send the transport over to grab it. So if we went, I see transport. There they are. There's those polymers. So he's gonna go grab a few of them. 
except there's only three. Uh, he's only got enough space left for three, so he's going to roll back and unload all his resources. There we go. It's actually really nice music. All right. So while we jam out to this, let's load uh, let's load up some power cables. So we're going to power cable to there, to there, and then down to here. Ugh. It's always weird because it's a hexagonal based system, so uh, sometimes you get a little bit funky with the power cables. Then we'll run some. Uh... There we go. Oh, I'm going to go. Let's run up to the main tube. There we go. Oh, we just got the new tech. Now we can get oh a fungal farm. We get the outdome building. Um, where do I go? Oh wait, oh we don't have that. Oh, is it just text revealed? We don't actually start with them researched. Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh, we start with text revealed, not researched. Whoops. That's actually wow. Um, this this uh, guy is not as good as I thought he was. Oh well, let's get rockets and uh, shuttles require less fuel. That's rather important. And then we'll go for a uh, probably yeah explorer AI. Very very strong tech. All right. So uh, let's grab. Oh, wait, do we have any more anomalies? No, we don't. Okay. This ship's n oh, a third of the way ready to take off. But what we're going to want to do is we're going to finish building up our uh, little industry here. And then we're going to want... Actually, let's let's just put up the, the other dome straight away. Here we go. The second dome will go here and will be our ram metals dome. Do -do, do -do -do. So what this means is that these ram metals are basically what we give back to Earth. We can use them for certain things like electronics. But for the most part... They're for exporting back to Earth and paying for your funding. That's how you get more funding. Um, Moxie so far doesn't really need... Oh, shoot, that's what we're going to set up so we're not wasting the time. Uh, we're going to set up a water tower. I'm going to put that... Let's put it a little bit further off. So the water tower can go here. And then we're going to want a uh, an oxygen tank just next to it. Here we go. Lovely. So we're going to run some pipes to both of these. Water and oxygen go through the same pipe. Um, hopefully, oh shit, is that okay? okay? All right, that, that looks fine. Then connect those up. I'm just gonna check out that it actually uh, does work, yeah? Yeah, it's fine, all right, cool. Why is the building not working? All right, no humans. So as you can see, you can assign shifts and such, but I think we're gonna uh, leave it there until I have my domes finished and we'll be back once we're ready to go. Uh, I'm just gonna gather some resources with the transport and then uh, we'll be back. Mm. Oh boy. Oh boy, there's a meteor incoming. I think we're good. I think it just missed my fucking rocket. Holy shit. So that can happen, um, among the other threats, and then the end game crises are even cooler when it comes to actually like providing threats. Meteor incoming. Holy shit! Again? <laughs> they say lightning doesn't strike twice, but I don't fucking believe them. Oh my god. Fucking meteors. We <laughs> These poor rockets. Whoa. Native life. What? What? Hang on. Hang on. What? The managed concern that deposits remains of microscopic life forms. Holy shit. Okay. Oh, so this is an early thing. Right. So, basically, we have this choice here. I hadn't seen this before. Holy shit. I thought this was like the event starting immediately, but may maybe it is. Maybe it does like continue on. So this is signs of native life. We've found microscopic life forms on Mars, uh, and either we can publish the find as a triumph of the mission and get 500 million funding, or 50 applicants. To be frank, we don't need the applicants, we need the funding right now, I think. Or, I don't know how many applicants we have. Look, just overall, I'd rather probably have the funding. 50 applicants is nice, but 500 million funding is much nicer. Way, our first dome is going up. So I actually built a second concrete extractor because it was taking so long. Milestone achieved. But there we go. So, now we can build things inside of the domes, which is where a lot of your production comes from. So you can build things like space bars and diners and stuff. But, here's the biggest thing that I didn't know when I first played this game. I thought that we were going to be able to connect the domes up. This is something I, I mentioned that I didn't really like. I thought we were going to be able to connect them up together, like with a road or whatever. As far as I can see, that isn't the case. I might be completely bonkers, but I have scoured this game and not been able to find it. Not even in, like, late game tech. Um, see, like, tunnel, for example. This is this is not what I'm talking about, but, like, imagine a tunnel between the domes. So you have, like, a relaxation dome and a work Keep dome and a, and a home dome. No, no. Instead, the way you sort of balance the game is you go... For example, traits, right? And you go, this is going to be the uh, the engineer's dome, right? So this is where we build uh, electronics. And that means engineers like dining and they don't like social. 
Okay. Uh, I, li I like hanging on. Is it, is it geologists like drinking? Yeah, I quite enjoy that. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit of silly. I quite love it. Right, so like we... Okay, for this one, for example... I think actually for this, we'd probably just have botanists and geologists in these two. But right, what we'd do is we'd go, all right, so we have geologists in this one. That means we need a space bar. And that gives us relaxation, drinking, and social, right? But there we go. That does a space bar for those people. Uh, we then have a... What are we going to want? Right, we'll have, we'll have people working in the polymer station. What do we need? We need engineers there. Okay, so we want to satisfy the engineers. And then we would build a home for the people. So we, we, we're researching apartments currently, but we could get, you know, living quarters. Um, we'd have a research lab, you know, like we could have a research dome with a bunch of research labs in it. Uh, we could have a school, a playground, a nursery, all that sort of stuff. Basically, you can actually just have like children faced, like based domes, which are built for nothing but breeding, essentially. Uh, breeding and teaching, because people need to be a certain level of comfort to have kids. Here we go, this rocket is ready to take off. We're gonna launch it, straight back home. And there we go. So now we can, when it gets back to Earth, we can use it again to bring more things back to us. And, uh, essentially that's the, that's the basis of the game, the sort of core game loop is until you're self-sufficient uh, self on Mars and able to build everything, you need to keep sending stuff back and bringing stuff to Mars. Uh, but eventually, of course, you can be completely self-sufficient. Alright, something I forgot to mention is that uh, maintenance is your main limiter in this game. The reason why you can't just build everything and keep building is maintenance, and that's why you're always going to be sort of on a clock. Um, so that's why I just realized I just, I've left this building on the whole time I should not have. I should actually turn off these domes as well. Um, what it means is when the time is up on the maintenance, it requires whatever resource that is. In this case, a machine part, two machine parts, two metal, uh, one metal, 0 0.5 of a machine part. But it even gets down to really bad shit like maintenance for uh, electronics. That's rough. Because electronics are a very valuable resource, and I can't actually produce those on Mars just yet. So... That's sort of the um, the Resources limiter of the game, is even when you can produce something, even when you can produce polymers, Sector there's still 10. things that, that have a uh, have a limiter, right? There we go, we'll send these boys out. The songs that will take you from Lead to a breakthrough, nice. But yeah, that's still the limiter that will keep your colony a certain size. Until you can keep expanding on your production, you won't be able to do that. For example, uh, eventually I will just run out of surface metal, and I'll need to keep harvesting metal. Um, and if I can't harvest metal, I can't have my water tower work, or I can't have my moxie work, right? Here we go, we've just discovered the breakthrough. Gotta get them good vibrations. <laughs> so domes just uh, restore sanity to their inhabitants every soul. Basically, these are all sort of super cool little bonus things. Like, um, I remember one breakthrough was, you know, obviously turning a, co a colonist into food. There was another one which was, um, I think drones became... Uh, didn't need to charge themselves anymore or something like there was there's all sorts of, like little cool get they're, like they're very gameplay changing those ones they're not just like you get five percent more water breakthrough right they're generally very fun breakthroughs which is what i like about them it's what what's make uh, anomalies fun and exciting you're like oh shit i might get something really cool and it's gonna be something you haven't seen before most likely the rover manipulators held the silver white mineral up to the camera just as the chemical analysis came oh. through we found tellurium Oh. Okay, well there we go, we just get an extra robotics, uh, 10% boost to robotics. Nice, so that sort of thing happens. Here we go, we're mining up these. You'll notice what- hang on. Let's- There we go. Official Mars channel. So we're now running, uh, the party bus has got some medals on it. We're basically gonna move along with the rover and the party bus, who's gonna bring our resources. Wait, hey, wait, come on, get the bloody resources. There we go. Um, and they're gonna build pipes all the way along. Now we've got anomalies, lovely. We are about ready to bring humans in, and we're frankly going to need to, because we've just got problems with breaking down right now and the lack of polymers. So, uh, oh, we have our house ready. Let's call in the humans. Let's do it. Let's uh, wrap up this first episode with that. With, like, the humans actually landing, of course. So what we're going to want, we're going to want some scientists. We're going to want some engineers. We're going to want some geologists. And some botanists. Those will be our four that we want. Now, we only have a rocket capacity of 12. We actually have more space on Mars. Uh, wait, oh, it doesn't say available. Oh, hang on. Let me uh, let me actually turn on the bloody apartments, shall we? Here we go. Turn this on. There we go. Are you not? Oh, whoops, you're not connected. That's why you're not giving us any water. Lovely stuff. So as you can see, this has now got its oxygen. It's got its food. Oh, sorry, it's got its water, and it will be getting its food. 
Uh, from inside, let's actually turn on the space bar as well. Oh god, everything's breaking. It sucks that it does sort of annoy me that if you don't have something on, even we if it's not working at shortage. all, it just doesn't. Uh, sorry, it, it it breaks down. That's a sort of annoying little no point of research. micromanagement. Research um, where are we? Oh, life support right here. Farm. So let's put down our farm real quick. There we go. Once that gets built, we should be ready to call them in. Uh, no active research. Let's go for... Oh, in-dome buildings require less maintenance. Yes, please. Martian borns. Let's get uh, more crops in there. Let's get, let's get water reclamation. Lovely. And then we'll get... Um, Productive training. There we go. Productivity training. Lovely. So what we've got here is got this lovely little farm, which lets us... Uh, it's very efficient, very let, uh, lets us basically grow whatever the hell we want. Um, and it's a lot better than the hydroponics. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have a botanist running that. We're going to have some uh, scientists here to get through our science faster, because that's really important. And then we'll have engineers in the polymer factory and we geologists in the rare shortage. minerals. We have space for 24 people, but our rockets can only bring 12, so... We'll have to bring multiple rockets. Um, now, importantly, the way this game sort of works is for people you can assign work shifts. So you could build three rare metal extractors, or you could just set three shifts on the one metal extractor. Each person only has one one job for one shift. So if someone's working in the rare metal extractor in shift one, they cannot work at any other time, as far as I'm aware, right? So you need a separate crew of workers for that entire time. Everyone works one shift at one location. Those lazy bastards. So, uh, yeah, you can't really... You can't have someone work a bar for the first shift and then the second shift. Or you can't have them work the bar for the first shift and then work rare metals for the second shift. That's just not a thing. Let's uh, call in our uh, spaceship. We should be good. And also, yeah, we're, we're still building this pipeline because we discovered water! Out here on Mars, underground water. We're going to go uh, harvest that up and bring it over. Oh, whoops. I forgot to open our sterling generator. So you can close this to protect it from dust, or you can open it and let it produce a bunch of power. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd forgotten that. But there we go, that's producing Meteor all our stuff now. Incoming. Oh my fucking god. Well, that just fractured my dome. It's being fractured and is losing oxygen. Five polymers Sector for repairs. Scans. Oh my god, you can actually get people with other biological sex. Bring one in. That is neither male, male nor female. Oh my god, Earth, what is happening? So we're not going to get children nor seniors. We're going to make sure that we have... Is there anything we really want? Um, I think genius? I'll oh, bring a genius along. Yes, it uh, generates research. I love it. Um, also, workaholics. Minus relaxation, no penalty for heavy workloads. Individual. Pro yes, bring in workaholics. We want those. Now, we don't want tourists or vegans. No. <laughs> Oh, God. I like Guru. I like tourists. But tourists, like, come and they, they just want to leave. Um, we don't want anyone who's lazy. Okay. We're still good. We've still got 84 matching colonists, which is really nice. Um, we don't want... Any alcoholics. Sure. We don't want any melancholics. Or... Nah. Loners? Gluttons? Gamblers? Well, that's not too much of a problem. That's fine. All right, let's bring in our first group of people. There we go. So they're on their way. We'd better fix our water issue pretty fast, which is the problem right now. We've got some broken buildings, so uh, let's fix that shit. All right, here we go. The ship cometh. Oh, boy. And they're in orbit. Oh, nice. Bringing down the ship. So we're going to turn on all of our buildings now, the polymer producing uh, all these things. Okay, so what are we going to need? Um, we're going to close off... Oh. And determination. The first founders have set foot on the red planet. Beautiful. So basically, for 10 days, we cannot uh, have a colonist die, or otherwise just show that we have a bad colony, or we won't get any more colonists. We need Our founders need to survive for the next 10 days, Milestone and we shall be good. Achieved. First human on Mars. As you can see, you get all of these, uh, all of these milestones. So, we're gonna say three work slots for. Uh, so we have what? Twelve colonists. So one person working the sets. Two, four, uh, seven, ten. Okay, and then okay. So we're gonna we're gonna say cut back one there. There we go. All right. So that is what we're doing. We've got two scientists. Do we actually? Oh no, you're a botanist and you're a scientist. What have we got? 
Oh, we do have botanists. Nice. Okay, so we've got a bunch of botanists here. We've got... Now, see, you can actually look down. Straight to these people. If we go... Have arrived. We'll wait for them to get in. Hang on. Let's... Is them in their space suits. Lovely, lovely. Right. And then if they run inside, here they are. Here are our colonists. So... Oh, my God. Hang on. Is that... Uh, slowly slide forwards. It's like William Riker without the mustache but with a beard. Oh, she no, no, he looks like um Super Troopers. That guy. Right, so you can set a workplace or set a residence. This guy is fit and he is a founder. Um, that means he likes exercise and he has more health was recovered when resting. He can work when his health is low. He's not very comfortable, but he's like happy in morale. We can rename him as well. He's apparently a youth, but he looks like Jesus, like a good 30. Dun dun. Dun dun. Dun dun. Dun 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 dun. Lovely. Let's uh, let's actually go build the rest of this bloody pipeline, shall we? We're definitely having a production of water. We're storing it now, even. We have plenty of water. Crop failure reported. Yeah, I know, I know. Crop failure, because we didn't actually grow anything. But hey, there we go. We're now watering it. This is giving us oxygen. It's improving. Now, so it's a nice thing. You actually have soil quality as well. So you can grow better crops, but they destroy your soil quality. Or you can grow soybeans, for example, that increase your soil quality, but aren't as good. So currently I've got a wheat, wheat, soybeans, wheat, wheat, soybeans. So it'll increase uh, soil quality over time and will also give me food and these will also give me oxygen. You can also just get plants that do nothing but give you oxygen or like are really shitty for food. And then here we've got a water reclamation system. This gives us 70% uh, of the water that's used in the dome is given back to you. It's a really powerful thing. It's what's called a spire. There are different sorts of spires you can put in domes. So you can put that, uh, it's like one per dome. You can get things like an arcology, which is a big house. You can get a medical spire. I think there's a research spire as well. Um, there's a lot of very cool things. But, uh, oh god, there's another pipe leak here. Man, this music's really nice. Really, really nice. Let's uh, pull over these things. And uh, I think we... Oh, there's already a drone here to look after it. I think we might be good to finish there for the first episode. So as you can see, we've actually... Oh, bloody wrong guy. Uh, we've managed to set up our first colonists. We've got them in here. We can't bring any more until the uh, until the bloody 12 days elapse, though. We've got a rocket. We're going to send this rocket off because it's got 40 and 6. You know, it's going to bring us some uh, some money back from Earth. We've got 21 drones. Here's one thing I don't like is you can't, like, there as far as I can tell... Earth-sick colonists. Oh, hello. Earth-sick. What does that mean? Um, Earth-born colonists whose comfort is depleted will quit their job and leave the colony at the first moment. Oh boy, we need service buildings so that they have unprepared meals. Oh, there's no way to eat. That's a really big problem. They need luxury shopping. So, hang on, we need... We're gonna need to look after that real quick. So we need somewhere for them to eat. That means the diner. Yeah, I forgot they need uh, prepared meals. The diner, they want luxury or at least shopping of some sort. We're gonna give the grocer. That means they have uh, a place to shop. And luxury, well... We don't have much in the way of that. I mean, it's the casino, but I think they're going to have to just miss out on luxury. Um, yeah, it's luxury is generally very expensive as well. So what we'll do is we'll cut back on our various jobs in order to uh, free up more space for that. There we go. See, we just Building don't have enough workers right now. Alien world. Oh. That takes guts, to say the least. Oh, nice. So Catherine Bernard has the enthusiast trait. See, she's now an enthusiast, which means increased uh, perform boost and a high morale. You can also teach these traits to people. Um, it's quite a nice little system. We're going to turn off the second sh shift here. We're going to turn off the night shift here. And I should hopefully start to balance out the work a little bit. We just need more people, really. I have too many jobs for not enough people. So there we go. We just got funding received for sending off those rare medals. We're currently dealing with uh, all our sad, sick people right now, though. Resources oh, I see. Done. Okay, so when someone is uh, is not is Earth sick, they also don't look for a job. That's where uh, people are just resting right now. Earth sick, they want to go home. This will go down in history. Here we go. The long time dream of human civilization as a whole to settle another world has come true. To be among the people who made this happen feel, makes me feel enthusiastic and proud. We're already swarmed with applicants for the relocation to Mars, and the wanderlust and enthusiasm of these people makes me proud to be a human being. The Red Planet continues to be inhospitable and even dangerous, but we as a species have always displayed an ability to adapt and improve. The adverse conditions will only make us try harder. So I say, bring it on. There we go. We can now bring more colonists in. I believe... Do we still have those Earth-sick colonists? Let's see. 
Let me just uh, flick through my colonists and see if we can find them. Resources are low. Oh yeah, we, we, we totally do. They're, I don't think they're ever recovering. As we bring more people in, they shall leave. Let's send off this rocket. Here we go. Oh shit, we've got 13 drones with no controller. So we're gonna have to bring in two rockets next. We'll have to bring in a drone hub rocket. We'll remember to do that right now by going drone hub. We're not doing great in that whole uh, funding part of things. We don't have a lot of money. We'll bring in some bits and pieces just in case. Some metal as well. Because we're running a bit low on that. Bit of food just in case. And then that should be fine. That'll be the whole rocket. Lovely. Then we're gonna bring in a passenger rocket. Same specialization as before. Got plenty of people. 12 spaces on Mars. There we go. But I'll see you next time for those two rockets to arrive. We've got our uh, lovely little setup going on here. We've got some power, Break some water. Discovered. Oh, we just... Wait, wireless power? Recharge uh, station service drones in a 3 hex instantly. Oh. Okay, so like drones roll over and just go pick and instantly recharge. Pharaoh. Alright, thank you all for watching. Until next time, everyone. Farewell. Farewell.